Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create this animation. And to create this animation, we will jump into the graph editor, where we can add some extra noise to make our animation stand out. We're also going to create some looping materials or looping textures, in which we can make this apple transform into a golden apple. Thanks to Ducky3D for this amazing technique. So if you're ready to expand your knowledge, then let's jump right into Blender. To create this animation, you can of course create a model or we can download a model. Polyhaven has lots of free 3D models, which this apple that I have is also one of the free models. So just go to models, scroll down and look for the food apple 01. Then you can download it. It will automatically be downloaded as a blend file. When we open this blend file, we get this as our scene. So let's go to layout and take a little look of what we have. I also know that I want to record my animation from the front view. So if you go to one, which is the front view, then click on shift A to add a camera. Now this camera is directly pointed towards the front view. So we don't really have to, you know, play around with the rotation or anything else. The only thing is the location that we have to play around with. We can see that it's directly like imported in the middle. So we might need to change the Y axis. You can also go into the camera view, which is zero and then move it around, right? So something around here might look decent. So now that we have our camera in position, we can start to animate. First of all, what do I want to happen in this animation? Well, I want this apple to fall down in the middle rotate 360 degrees and go up again. In the middle of the rotation, we are also going to change the material, but I will show later how that goes. So let's drag our timeline a little bit up and change the end to 160. Let's go to frame zero and move our apple on top of here. Then click on I and do location. 20 frames later, I want it to be nice in the middle. So put it there. I location. Now we have created these two keyframes. And if we play this, you can see that we have a nice animation. So in the beginning, it falls down, but in the end, I want it to go up again. So I'm going to put my cursor around 140, then select frame 20, click on control C to copy this keyframe and then control V to paste it. Then at frame 160, we're going to do exactly the same, but then for this keyframe, so select it, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Make sure your mouse cursor is in this timeline, otherwise it doesn't copy it. So now if you play this, you can see it falls down and then at 140, it goes up again. Awesome. Now we want more to happen, right? We want it to start rotating once it's down. So go to frame 20, click on I and do rotation. Then at frame 140, I want it to have rotated entirely. So let's click on R, Z, 360, and then I, rotation. So now, fast down, rotates 360 degrees, and then jumps up again. So this is our animation, but it actually still looks quite dull, right? It still looks quite boring because it just falls down, just is here, and then starts rotating. If we actually make it look like it starts to float a little bit in the air, we already improved this animation by a lot. Let's change this timeline to the graph editor and move it a little bit up. Let me quickly explain how to move around in this graph editor. The scroll wheel will make you zoom in and out. Holding the middle mouse button will make you pan around. And as you can see, when some things are too big or too small, you can hold the control and hold the middle mouse button, then drag up and down to kind of compress this together. So this whole big curve here is the Z rotation. So here, the Z rotation. Now, the Z rotation is actually decent. I don't really need to change that. And we did not really rotate around any other uh, axis. So these can be hidden for right now. However, if we zoom a little bit in here, uh, it's a bit hard to see, control, middle mouse button, just zoom in. Then we can see that we have here our Z location, right? 
And as it shows, we have our first keyframe here, then it slowly falls down, and then around here, nothing really happens. Then it goes up again. This is our animation. But we can actually add modifiers to this animation. So if you click on N or click on this little arrow here, you can see that we have some ways to change our curves. Now, we're gonna add a modifier. And this modifier is just the noise modifier. As you can see right now, what we have here is quite abrupt. So if I play this, you can see that we have a quite abrupt, yeah, animation. That might not be really what we want. If you play around the skill and the strength, so the skill goes up, strength goes down, you can see that it will be less abrupt and it starts to look a little bit better. So let's put the strength even lower here and I'm gonna put the skill also a bit higher still. And here we have our animation. So you can see small little changes make this already look so much better, right? And you can still play around with them, but I want you to keep one thing into mind that I do not want this noise already to start uh, like before this down here. So how do we limit this noise for going in the first 20 frames? Well, let me make the strength bigger so we can actually see it. Uh, I'm gonna do it like this. If you click on the restrict frame range, then drag this down, we can see that we have a start and an end. So we want to start this noise at frame 20 and end around frame 140. Now you can see that it is restricted to this area. But in some cases, uh, let me make it smaller again, you can see that this actually can create quite abrupt starts and ends. So probably here we can also see a very abrupt end. We don't want this. So with blend in, we can make sure that it blends nicely in and with blend out, we can also make sure that it nicely blends out, right? So uh, let me actually put the strength down again, put this up. Now you can see that the transition is nice and smooth, but also the noise is nice and smooth, right? So I uh, might make it even bigger. Here, and here we have a decent animation. Awesome. So you can do this for only this location, right? The Z location, but you can always add it for other locations or rotations as well. And an easy way is to just copy this. So I can just copy the F modifiers, go to the Y location and paste it. And now we have also a movement around the Y location. And you can copy paste this to any location, rotation, or even scale. So just click on copy and then paste it wherever you want. But I'm gonna keep it at the Z location for right now. What do we want to happen next? We actually want to start and look into the materials. So let's go to the shading. So let me very quickly show to you how we can animate a looping uh, texture. So it's very easy actually. You just have to create a new material, add a wave texture, and I'm just gonna join this together. And what you can see right now are these waves, right? These are bands. And we can scale this a bit down so they are a bit bigger. And with a color ramp, we can also make them a little bit more uh, sharp. So you just go to constant and just drag this one out. So now we have very sharp lines. If I want to animate this, it's actually quite simple. You just need to drag your timeline in here, go to frame zero, and animate this face offset. So right click, insert keyframe, then around frame 60, we're gonna just go a bit further, right click, insert keyframe. And this is how you animate a texture. But you can see around frame 60 that it starts to jump, right? And that is not a nice loop. We want it to be a nice smooth loop. So how do we do this? Well, it has to do with the face offset. So I'm just gonna clear those keyframes, go to frame zero, and right now we're gonna look for a face offset in which this white is just barely visible, as small as possible. Right click on the face offset, insert keyframe, go to frame 60, and now you kinda wanna check how many of these um, loops you want. So do you want just one little loop or do you want multiple? So here, Whatever you want, you want to again look for a white 
tiny little dot, so just barely visible, right click, insert keyframe. So now what you will be able to see is that it starts to loop perfectly. The only problem here is that um, our animation is not linear, right? So you can see it kind of slows down, right? It's slow in the beginning, quickly in the middle, and then slows at the end. This is also a quick and easy fix. Just select your wave texture. And here you can see we have the face offset keyframes. Click on T and then make the interpolation linear. So now you can see that it is always at the same constant speed and it's just a very nice looping animation. So the cool thing about this is if I put a, let's say a noise texture here, I can actually play around with all of these textures and they will still be perfectly loopable as you can see right now. Cool, right? Plus this is black and white. So if we have a principled shader, so principled BSDF, and let's say another one. So we can have two totally different materials. So let's say this one is uh, pink. It is a metal. This one is blue. It is non-metal. And then we can just mix these two together. Mix shader. Join them to the mix shader. And now this is going to be the mask, right? So now instead of just being black and white, we can put any two materials and mask it off with this color ramp. And of course it will still be a nice and looping animation. So let's now go back to the Apple and let's actually see how we can make this work with the Apple in mind. So here we have the Apple. And if we go to the rendered viewport, you can see that it's quite dark. Also, I personally like to render inside cycles. So go to cycles, GPU, and then we of course also need to add a light. So just shift A, and here we can add a nice area light. We can scale this a bit down and put this in a nice position. Now, let's say this is what we want. What we want to do now is to create a material that makes this like transition into the gold. So select the apple and we're gonna do exactly the same as what I just showcased. So we're gonna use a wave texture. And if you just click on Ctrl and Shift, if you have at least your Node Wrangler add-on activated, then you can see that a little viewer pops up and we can just see whatever is happening with this texture. Now, we have our bands and I personally want to, first of all, put the scale lower, right? So maybe one, oh, maybe actually 0 0.1. But I also want to put the Z axis instead of the Y axis. So it goes from top to bottom. Then we need a color ramp. And this color ramp is going to be set at constant. And I will drag one of these little handles out. Now, you already know what we're looking for here. We're looking for a minimal of white, right? So somewhere around here. And we want to animate this. So just drag a timeline in here. And we are going to frame zero. Right click on face offset and insert keyframe. Now, go to frame 160 and then we want to put the face offset lower. So um, I'm just gonna do like one rotation, I think. So here. And then let's make it small. Right click, insert keyframe. Now, I want to select this wave texture, click on T and make sure this is set at linear as well. So now our animation looks like this. Awesome. So if we look at this line, you can see that it's actually quite sharp and I want it to look a little bit more like a fluid. So I'm gonna put another texture, a Voronoi texture or Voronoi, and then I'll put the distance into the distortion. And here we can see that we have a little bit more of a wavy um, yeah, line, but we can also put this to smooth F1 and play around with the scale if we want to make it a bit more smooth. So this looks actually quite decent. So these three textures can be used as our mask, right? So we just need a mix shader and one of the materials will go in the top shader. The other material still needs to be created. So just create a new principled BSDF. 
I'm just gonna go very quick. Kind of a gold color, make sure it's metallic and the roughness is up to you. Maybe 0.3 or 0.4 will be fine. Then this principal shader will go into the bottom shader of the mix shader. And the color ramp goes into the fac, so it actually works as a mask. Now, this gets connected and here we have our material. So let's add some displacement to make this gold a little bit thicker and make this look even a bit more realistic. So we just need a displacement node. This displacement node goes into the displacement of the material output and we can join this color ramp into the height of this displacement. Now, it looks like it's working, but not really. This is not a displacement that we can see right now. It's only a bump. If we go to the material section, we can scroll down and go into settings. Here we can choose the displacement and select from bump only, maybe displacement and bump. Now we can see that a weird thing happened. If I scroll out, you can see that, yeah, now we actually have some displacement, but it's a bit extreme. So changing the scale will limit this extremeness. So if I put this to 0.1, you can see that we have less of an extreme scale. We can even put this lower. So 0.01 might act a bit better. I also want you to keep in mind, because the mid level is 0.5, it is, yeah, the size of the apple itself so this uh, black for in this instance is also going to be scaled down. So the mid level, if we put this at zero, the apple will essentially stay the same size at all times and only the gold will essentially become thicker. Now, the scale still needs to go down. So maybe 0 0.001. And here we have a more of a decent effect. However, you can see that we have a weird little bump here. And the bump that we have is not exactly where this line is. That is because the geometry of this apple is not high enough to create a decent looking displacement. So if we go to the modifiers, we can always add some extra subdivisions. Now, the subdivisions work quite well and probably you will put the render at three, um, but you have to keep in mind that rendering it with higher subdivisions can slow down renders and blender in general. It will also, if you go too high, it might even crash Blender. So please always save before you're gonna render. I can put maybe the left viewport up to two so you guys can see what is happening, but we do get a lot of weird artifacts here. This is because this particular color ramp is very sharp. And to create that sharpness into a displacement map is quite uh, yeah, taxing on your subdivision. So you need a lot of subdivisions to make it look really good. However, what we can do is we can duplicate this color ramp. Um, I'm already gonna connect it. And for this color ramp, I want this line to be exactly in the same spot, but I want it to be, instead of this constant, a more of a, um, yeah, a smoother line. So ease could do that. So if we go here and drag this ease a bit up, somewhere around here, we can use this as our displacement. So I'm gonna, pop that one out and just use this as our displacement. And here we can see that um, it's gonna get smoother very soon. Mm, to put this down, maybe somewhere around here, a little bit backwards. Here seems to be a decent spot. And as you can see, this looks way, way better. Now, the rendering itself, I will leave up to you guys. I personally did just a black world. So this world color went very low and the lighting was actually something like I have here. So we have some, uh, yeah, I guess dramatic lighting with just one light here and a, uh, yeah, quite a thick shadow here in the back. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you ever rendered something out for my tutorials, then please share it to me on Instagram. It is in the description down below. And if you could like this video and maybe subscribe to my channel, that would help me a lot. So thank you and I'll see you guys in the next one.